Greetings, educators. My name is Tasha Hefner, and I am also a fellow educator. I have been teaching in Title I elementary schools for 17 years. I, too, am a product of inner city schools. I've taught second grade, third grade, and fifth grade. And one common thread that I've noticed with the students that I've taught and come in contact with is a deficiency in reading. And of course, reading impacts every other academic subject. In my assessment, the deficiency in reading came because of a lack of phonemic awareness. I was introduced to Marva Collins early in my career. I read the Marva Collins way. I, of course, saw the movie several years earlier um, where Cicely Tyson portrayed Marva Collins. I've been intrigued with Marva Collins pretty much the entire time I've been teaching. I was never um, blessed enough to get to one of her workshops, but I did come in contact with other teachers who had gone to her workshops. I got their notes. I read through them. Anything that Marva Collins passed out that I could get my hands on, I was reading it and trying to decipher what she was doing so that I could replicate her program into my classroom. Her word wall cards, I was trying to get my hands on as much as I could afford at that time, which wasn't much, by the way. Um, if you're familiar with Marva Collins, you know that she has said that she used the open court phonics method and program. Um, Finally, I was able to, through my school, get an open court phonics kit um, and begin to use it, but it just didn't match what Marva Collins was talking about. So, of course, I continued to search and search and look online and um, type in to YouTube um, anything about open court phonics or phonics in general. Finally, I came to find a website this past summer, 2016, um, that I'd like to share with you. It is called the Original Open Court Phonics Program. Now, um, when I looked at this phonics program in depth, this is what Marva Collins was using. The original open court phonics program is no longer for sale, but someone has posted it in its entirety on the internet. If you just type in the original open court phonics program, you too will see it. As you can see, it is dated, um, but the, the magical, I guess if I can say that, um, aspect of the original open court program is that they start teaching students using the long vowel sounds rather than the short vowel sounds. That way the students can read more intricate words sooner. Um, it doesn't seem like they're reading baby quote unquote materials. So I think this is a great program for older students, especially maybe third, fourth, fifth graders that um, are struggling in reading. And I had never seen a program that used uh, the long vowel sounds or taught the long vowel sounds before teaching the short vowel sounds. So the Open Court Phonics program is based on all of the word wall cards and the word wall cards have different sounds and pictures that upon looking at them, sometimes they don't quite match up. But there is a story that introduces all of the letter sounds. And the story might have a picture of one thing, but a sound that makes a different sound that's not aligned to the picture, but it is aligned to the story. Um, on this website, the original Open Court Phonics program, if you scroll down to this part, you'll see phonics record one and different YouTube videos that introduce all of the sounds. And this is the record <laughs> that um, teachers used 
I guess back in the day, to introduce the open court sounds along with the open court word wall cards. So the students aren't just taught a sound and a picture, they're taught the sounds through a story so that they can make a better connection to the sounds. Now, I teach second grade this year and I have been using the old version of the open court system. I just made a few changes. I changed the story so that it would reflect the students in my classroom. Um, I came up with my own characters in this story that look like the students in my own inner city classroom so that they could connect to the sounds better. So in this open court uh, program, there is the blue book and the gold book. The blue book is the first book of words and sounds that the students learn and the gold book is the next level. Now, I went through all of this in detail. I went, I clicked on every um, hyperlink and read through it this summer before school started. But when I got here to the three books lined up side by side, this is where I found all of the information compiled on one page. So if you go to this link, and click Open Court Correlated Language Arts Program slash Teacher's Guide to the Foundation Program, you are going to see this. And this is what the cover of the teacher's manual looked like, I guess in its hard copy state. Um, the teacher lessons are all here from lesson one all the way to lesson 55 in the blue and gold books. The lesson plans are laid out, in my opinion, pretty simply and pretty easy to understand. Um, I'll go through maybe one or two lessons really quickly um, just to show you what I do. I've come up with my own little um, method. So I start with lesson one, okay, and I teach one lesson per day. Um, maybe I'll let the lesson stretch out over a period of two days. It depends. Uh, Marva Collins said in uh, the video that I have of her teaching her open court phonics method that it takes her three months to teach a student to read. If you teach one lesson per day of the 55 lessons, that will cover that three month period. So I'm guessing that this is what she was doing. She was teaching one lesson a day. And some of these lessons are repeat lessons so that the student can really get a better understanding of the letter sounds. And so if you teach one lesson a day, it is designed to go back and review and repeat sometimes. Okay, so um, the first lesson teaches the M sound, um, the letter M sound, the long E sound, not all of the spellings, just a few, and the S sound or the soft C sound. Um, here is the story that the old open court phonics used to teach those three sounds to start off reading. Like I said, I made up my own story um, using uh, characters that reflect my inner city students. Um, word lines. This is the first page I go to. The word lines tell you what words um, after the phonics lesson is taught that the students will be able to read. And there is a way that you can write the words on the board and the sounds so that the students can have further practice reading. I recorded myself um, doing this. So if you watch some of my previous videos, you'll see me writing or doing word work on the board and the students are chanting along and reading words. Um, I chant all of the uh, phonemic word wall cards every single day, even on the first day I taught the lesson. Um, and the students uh, 
just had to learn to keep up with me. I've also recorded myself doing that. I teach, I chant those phonics ward wall cards with my students even before I introduce the sounds because when I do get to the sound, then hey, they already are familiar with the chant that goes along with it. Uh, I'm scrolling down to the next page that I look at. As you can see, there are pages you can print out where the students can, um, I guess, trace these words to get all the information, the word sounds in their heads better. I don't do this. I don't have enough time in my class. Phonics for me lasts anywhere from 15 minutes at the beginning to 30 minutes a day. Um, these are the lessons for the teachers, the lesson plans. Um, it, it tells you how you can introduce these letters and sounds to the students. Um, and that's lesson one. Now, if I go back to another lesson, I'm going to skip down to a lesson with a book attached to it. So book, blue book lesson seven has a book attached to it. I know that it is a book attached to it because it has the word eat here, lesson nine, the we light, lesson 10, a fine meal, and so forth. The books uh, get more intense as you continue to teach. And when I say intense, I just mean the words uh, increase. And of course, no word is introduced in a book until it is introduced in the phonics lesson for that day. So here we are at lesson seven. Here are the sounds that are introduced. Uh, knock, at the, knock at the door, duh, 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 roaring lion, er, 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 buzzing bee, z, 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 block I, block I. Um, let's see here. Here are the word lines, as Open Court calls them, in Lesson 7. And these are the words that I break down on the word wall um, work that I have video recorded myself doing. And I write the vowels first and then I write the other letter sounds and the children read the words in chunks and then read the entire word. I also use these words as spelling words and I use a sentence, one sentence for my dictation sentence uh, for my weekly spelling test. So it all correlates. Um, here are of course some writing um, practices and papers that are that could be used. I don't print them out. Like I said, I don't have enough time during the day. Um, here is a page that I do print out. You'll see the word lines for the students. I will print these out for my students and minimize to 85% and they will glue them in their reading journals and practice reading those word lines with me. And during Reader's Workshop, they can refer back to those pages and practice on their own, as well as read their just right books, which are in a bag hanging on their chair um, so they don't have to get up and walk around the room during Reader's Workshop. They just can read while I'm working with a small group. What do my students do while I'm working with a small group? They sit down and they read. And that's it. Um, the only way to become a better reader is to read. I encourage my students to take a book with them whenever we leave the classroom. If we take a bathroom break, if we're on our way to the cafeteria, I encourage them to bring a book and read while we are standing in the hallway or whenever there's downtime. Okay, so here's the book. Um, the book is presented in different ways. At the end of a lesson, you'll see the book presented without pictures and just the words here. That can be printed out and distributed to the students, or you can actually click on the book and you'll see the actual book. And I will print that book out and um, cut it up so that they'll have an actual book. Yes, it's a lot of work, but I feel like if they actually have a book in their hand that looks like a book, they're more apt to read it. I model read for them as a class, and then they practice reading on their own um, during different periods of Reader's Workshop. 
Thank you for listening to me today. This is my first video of